We've all been following the investigation of Veronica Butler and Gillian Kelly's disappearance and later their murders. I have seen a lot of updates all over the news and all over social media. You got a little bit of information there and a little bit of updates there. So I decided to take all the information I could find, all video clips, all updates and put it into one video. So let's just start at the beginning. Tonight, the desperate search for two Kansas moms. Veronica Butler and her ex-boyfriend, Wrangler Rickman, had been in a custody battle on and off for the last five years. Rickman was in the end court ordered to attend a six-month treatment for substance abuse. And Veronica's brother had been accused of abusing Veronica and Rickman's two children. So the custody of the children went to Rickman's mother, Tiffany Adams. Veronica was giving supervised visitation with the children every Saturday. But Tiffany Adams, she hated Veronica and would do anything in her power to keep Veronica away from her own children. Tiffany even denied her own son, Rickman, to see his own children. Veronica filed for custody again so she could have her children back with her. And it's said in the court documents that Tiffany had said that if she lost custody of the children, bodies were going to drop. On Saturday, March 30th, 2024, Veronica was driving to the Four Corners to meet Tiffany so she could pick up her children. But what Veronica didn't know is that Tiffany Adams and her boyfriend Ted Collum had other plans for Veronica that day. Tiffany and her boyfriend Ted were involved in an anti-government group called God's Misfits and they would have meetings on a regular basis in their friend's house belonging to Cora and Cole Twombly. Obviously, Tiffany Adams had been talking with her friends Cora and Cole Twombly about Veronica and the custody battle. They all came up with a very sinister plan so Tiffany would never have to worry about Veronica again. Ted Collum had rented a skid steer and drove it to a remote area near a dam. And over the next few days, he would dig a hole that was 10 feet deep. Ted was starting to get a bit nervous and told the owner of the skid steer that if anyone would come and ask why he had rented and driven the skid steer, it was because he had done some work for him, and the owner agreed. In the meantime, Tiffany had done some internet searches like tasers, burn phones, and how to lure a person out of their home. After that, she went out and bought three burner phones and five tasers. And then all they had to do was sit down, lean back, and wait until Saturday. Saturday came and Veronica and Gillian met up in the morning and about 9 a.m. they started the 45-minute drive to the Four Corners. Veronica was so excited because her daughter's birthday was all planned and ready. They drove through a very remote area where there is absolutely nothing to see. It's almost like a desert. No houses, no shops. Not really any cell service or Wi-Fi. When Veronica and Gillian was about three miles from the Four Corners, they were forced to stop the car and pull over because Cora and Cole had blocked the road. And when they pulled over, Tiffany, Ted and Paul were there waiting for them. And what took place after that is unknown. But the window on the driver's side on Veronica's car was broken. Inside the car, they found Gillian's purse, and inside the purse was a gun magazine, but there was no weapon. Outside the car, there were large pools of blood, and there was a broken hammer, and next to the hammer was Veronica's glasses. Veronica and Gillian had been reported missing, and their pictures were shared all over the news and social media. Law enforcement and volunteers were out searching the area, but they couldn't find Veronica and Gillian. People were calling in with tips and information about the two missing Kansas moms, and everything started to point at Tiffany Adams and Ted Collum. Investigators interviewed a lot of people, 
by when they interviewed Cole and Cora's 16-year-old daughter. She told them that she believed that Tiffany, Ted, and her parents, Cole and Cora, was involved in the deaths of Veronica and Jillian. Also, I have some exclusive new information on how the women were murdered. The other new information we're able to confirm now, um, Tracy, is that the four, uh, the two victims were not shot. We don't know uh, the exact cause of death or how they died, but we did confirm through the medical examiner that they were not shot. Yes, you're absolutely right. And that was something that I talked about with Dan Abrams a, a week or two ago, kind of really discussing why it took so long, quite frankly, to identify their bodies. And I want to be sensitive about this, but there's rumors, I don't know if it's true or not, that there was a broken hammer at the scene. And if that is the case, um, then it sounds perhaps they were bludgeoned to death. And that takes time to really figure out identifications with dental records. And so that's what I felt all along is that they were not shot. Um, they were beaten in some way, which is absolutely horrific. She told them that when her parents came home that day, she was asked to clean their truck and was also told that they never had to worry about Veronica Butler again. She also told them that another man was involved by the name Paul Grice. The 16-year-old girl had overheard conversations where they talked about the murders. A fifth suspect in connection with the murders, this man you see right here, uh, was also now arrested, 31-year-old. Uh, he's a father of three. Paul Grice is his name. Uh, and we're told that he confessed to police yesterday that he was involved in the planning, the killing, and the burying of the moms. After a lot of investigations, it was time for arrests to be made. They drove out in two teams. One team to Tiffany and Ted's house, and one team to Cole and Cora's house. Investigators knew that they were very dangerous people. They had a lot of firearms in their house. So they came in full force. They were prepared for a gunfight, but to their surprise, everything happened very calmly. And not long after, Paul Grice was arrested as well. And after all the arrests were made, all they had to do now was find Veronica and Gillian. The police traced the GPS locations on the burner phones, and all three burner phones pinged at the location where Veronica's car was found abandoned. And not long after, they found out that two of the burner phones pinged near a dam about eight miles from Veronica's car. The investigators drove to the location of the dam, and they found an area close to the water that was partially covered with hay. They decided to start digging there, and 10 feet on the ground, they found the bodies of Veronica and Gillian. They had been buried under blocks of cement and dirt. The investigation is still ongoing, and they are now trying to find out if Veronica and Gillian were buried alive. Uh, but this is the area where the missing women were found. This is the spot. You remember in the police report they mentioned uh, a dam this right here, this, this buildup of dirt, this is the dam. There's a pond on the other side. Uh, and if you walk with me this way, uh, just about 50 feet or so, maybe a little more from the dam, you can see where the earth is disturbed, where the tractors were out here. This is where investigators came. They dug right in this area, went down about 10 feet, I'm told. Uh, and this is where they discovered the missing mom's bodies. If you look in the distance there, uh, you can see there is a pile of hay back there. I am told by sources uh, that that hay was moved over the area where the digging happened, that Tad, the suspect Tad, moved that hay over here uh, to cover up the area where he was digging, hoping that the cows, this is a, you know, there's a cow farm here, that the cows would come over, this is a ranch, and start feeding on the hay and make the area look less suspicious. Uh, but still, investigators were led to this spot. And again, this is the area right here where they started digging and they found the bodies. I have to say, in my own personal opinion, I hope that they're not going to find that answer. Because that would just make this even more devastating and heartbreaking than it already is. And I definitely don't think that's something that the families, they need to know if that's the case. 
Instead of God's misfits, they need to be called the devil's herd. They're heading to the death penalty. And I, you know, these little groups like that in small towns, that town may be scared of them, but, you know, welcome to the real world. I believe justice will be served in this case. I hope all five of them will get exactly what they deserve. To all the families and friends of Veronica and Julian, I want to say that I am so sorry for your loss. I'm especially heartbroken for Veronica and Julian's children, but I know that they are safe with their families and they will get all the love and support that they need. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and please show support to the channel by hitting that like, share and subscribe button. Until the next one, take care and stay safe. Bye.